Welcome back from the break. Uh, you're still watching Morning Rush, Monday edition of the show. My name is Desmond Okrekuda, as you can call me Desifagin, the star. But I mentioned earlier that we have a very, very important discussion this morning on the show. And trust me, you're going to love this one. It's, it's a very dicey, you know, all of that. So we're going to have that discussion this morning. We're talking about the fact that should Ghana abolish the death penalty? Right, so this is a topic that has been going on for a very long time. For me also, I've been a fan of watching stuff like this on YouTube, um, you know, the prison system in, in, in America when people are convicted to, you know, um, into the prisons and, you know, it's a death penalty and they're given a few things. You know, those, those things, I've been watching all of that on YouTube, but really the discussion this one is should Ghana abolish the death penalty? And uh, joining me have this discussion is um, Madam Genevieve Partington. I love the name Partington. She's the country director for Amnesty International. So let's get straight into it. Good morning. Hi, good morning, Desmond. You're welcome. Thank you so yeah. much. I like it's the quite, hair. Thank you. It's quite <laughs> early this morning, yeah, isn't you it? You know, as far as we are used to it. <laughs> But yeah. It was okay for you? No, it wasn't. <laughs> Waking up this morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's part of it. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. So, um, just for the benefit of those who are watching the show, when we say a death penalty, mm -hmm. what really is that? Let's begin with that and then we move on to the yeah, other. So yeah, so a death penalty basically means that, um, you know, if you commit a crime, mm. depending on the crime, because it varies per country, yeah. um, you are sentenced to death. Okay. Um, so, you are put on death row. Most of the time, you are put in a high, um, you know, uh, prison that has a lot of, um, what do you call it? Uh, it's very secure, a mm. high secure well, maximum, prison. Yeah. Maximum mm. prison, yeah. So, you know, so most of the time when people are put on death row, mm. um, they have an, an amount of time to live. There's no parole and um, they are just waiting to be executed. Yeah. Um, in Ghana currently, we still have the death penalty but it's um, moratorium, okay. which basically means that we haven't executed anyone since 93. However, okay. we still sentence, sentence people to will. death. And I think this conversation came, came back recently um, after the second suspect in, in that um, incident with the um, Gregory Afoko. Yes, that, uh, yes. A, a subcare, I never get the name, the name right. Yes. Yeah, it, it came back again. But really... From your quarters, mm -hmm. why should we abolish the death penalty? Well, basically, um, Amnesty International believes in the right to life. Mm. Um, under international law, the death penalty is seen as cruel, is seen as a form of torture. In Ghana, um, the last um, execution was done by firing squad. Mm -hmm. And you can just imagine yeah. how traumatizing that, that is, even that for is. the families watching yeah. this happen. Um, so we, we believe it should be abolished because um, it's also, it plays a lot on the um, persons that are convicted. Mm -hmm. um, I know they are criminals, but we don't believe in an eye for an eye. Um, again, we, you know, Ghana is a state. We're not a moral institute where, okay, somebody gets killed. So we should also kill. I think that's very contradictory. Okay. Um, you know, so I, you know, we believe that it has to be abolished because mm. of these reasons. And also, most of the time, some people, for some people, it's unfair. Some people are actually on death row. They did not get fair trials. Okay. It's, mm. it's really the case in Ghana. So our system, our judicial system, cannot support death penalty sentencing, okay. actually, because... Mm. We just don't have the capacity to carry out a fair trial. trial. Um, most of these people don't get good rep representation in mm -hmm. court. So that means they don't have, good they don't have lawyers. lawyers. And a lot of the time, if you, if you see it, um, most of the people on death row are people from uh, you know, vulnerable backgrounds. They mm. don't have a good economic standing. And so a lot of them, they are there. They, they are like, oh, I, you know, I was brought here, I don't know why. Yeah. Yes, I got into an altercation and I ended up stabbing someone, but I was told to plead guilty. Guilty. So a lot of the time, most of them are told to, to plead guilty so that it just makes the process mm. faster. So sometimes you may get it wrong. So imagine if someone is on death row and they didn't have a fair trial. trial then to that defend means, themselves. Yes, mm. so that means there are people there 
that shouldn't be there as well. We have to really think about that, especially in our system. Right now in Ghana, there are 175 persons. 175 persons, persons yes, on, on a death, death row. row. Yes. And I'm sure a lot of them have been there for a very long, long time, not knowing. Yeah, some of them have mm. been there for years. Um, they are struggling to even get an appeal. Um, you know, but um, I know uh, we, Amnesty, we recently yeah. spoke to um, Office of the Chief Justice, mm -hmm. and I know that they are in support of abolishing the death penalty. So there's been progress there. You know, currently Ghana, we don't have a classification of murder crimes. Okay. Um, basically, if you commit a murder, you, you are um, sentenced to death. It's an automatic thing. thing. Okay. Um, so because of that, the judges to have no... Other option. They just have to go by it. Yes, the, but mm. go by the law. But right now, um, last year, um, Honorable uh, Sosu, that's the mm. MP for Medina, yeah, yeah, Francis Xavier he Sosu. pushed um, a private member's bill mm. to abolish the death penalty. Yeah. So it won't be completely abolished, but just by amending two um, acts that we currently have. That's the Criminal Code yeah. and then the Armed Forces Act. Mm. If we make some amendments in them, that means at least the murder charge will be removed from um you know death death sentence yeah yes yeah, so that's that's something that we're progressing on it's already pre was presented in parliament, in parliament last year okay so this year we're looking to have the second consideration mm -hmm. and then hopefully hopefully they'll vote yeah they'll yes. vote it. but if you're making a case for mm -hmm. um this to be abolished right let's let's take a look at some other countries yes and what is the impact for those who, who still have the death penalty? What really is the situation there for those who have abolished it? So we can, we can wait. Well, both of them. I mm. mean, right now, okay, so Amnesty, we just launched our global report okay. on death penalty. Mm. We launch it every year. It's called um, Death um, Sentences and um, Executions. And we launched uh, the 2022 report just last uh, week. And in that report, um, currently 112 countries have abolished the death penalty completely. 112? Yes. Okay. And from those countries, I think uh, about over, over 20 countries in mm. Africa okay. have abolished. abolished. So that means all our neighbors, Burkina, Togo, mm. Benin, Ivory Coast, they've all abolished. And we are still, we still haven't we still abolished have it. it. Yeah. Yes. And... Um, the thing is that most of the countries that have abolished, they have not seen an increase in crime rates. I yeah. think this is something that, an argument that people bring up a lot, that, oh, if we abolish the death penalty, crime rates will go up. It's a myth. Um, it's not true. There are no statistics that show that. And um, Canada, for example, abolished in, I think, 98. And since then, they've actually had lesser uh, crime rates. Crime rates. The proposition we are doing, we're not saying don't punish. Mm -hmm. We are saying life imprisonment. And again, there are classifications. Because imagine um, someone goes through a domestic violence um, situation, situation and through self-defense kills, kills the person. Yeah. That means the person automatically goes on death row. Um, which is not fair. Okay. Um, it's a self-defense situation. You are under duress. Maybe you've been abused for so many years and you happen to kill the person. So it's very, it's important that now we classify the murder mm. charges and um, we look more into, you know, why people are committing these crimes, the okay. root causes of these crimes. These crimes. So for you, it's about, um, we should consider life Life imprisonment, imprisonment absolutely. rather than you know the death yes. thing. But but a lot of people are also making the arguments that already our prisons are congested, and mm -hmm. you know someone has been in that situation, killed someone. Yes. And per the law, the person has to so an eye for an eye. So, you know. So if the prisons are congested, why do we not? Yeah. So know, so rather? currently Ghana prisons are currently fifty percent congested, mm. as in you know over. And it's not the persons on death row or, you know, that have congested the prisons. Okay. It's actually the persons on remand. Mm. Um, remand simply means, you know, petty crimes like you've, I don't know, stolen a You goat. stole something from the market. Yes. Yeah. And those are the people in prison taking up space. They are waiting to go to court. So that whole system needs, a, you know, an 
overhaul. Mm. And um, I know um, Office of the Chief, Chief Justice has also made pro propositions, propositions to that okay. for non-custodial sentencing. sentencing yeah. So non-custodial sentencing simply means um, community service. Um, now, maybe you go to prison, you do certain hours of hard labor mm. or something other than filling up the prisons. The prisons. So that's one proposition that has been made. But no... Um, they do not agree with the congestion thing. No, life, yeah. life imprisonment will not in any way congest the prisons because guess what? It doesn't make any difference. Right now, Ghana, it's been 30 years that nobody has been executed. executed. So it's the same thing mm. if it was life imprisonment. Life imprisonment. Just that now it will have a better mental health factor mm. on those that have been um you know convicted okay yes well as, as you, you you go about this have you sought public opinion and what really uh, do people have to say about this yeah so a study by one of our own mm. dr kofi boachi um he did he did a study supported by death penalty project uk and they did a, a survey in ghana and about uh, i think 48 percent of uh, no, it's actually more than that. Uh, it's almost it's over fifty percent mm. of people are are not um, against. Um, no, they are sub in sub. They are not supportive. They are not support of okay. the death penalty, okay. which means they are for abolition. Okay, mm. they 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 want it to be abolished. abolished. They are okay if it's abolished. Mm. Um, and then nine percent were more in favor of. Uh, of not abolishing yeah. it. That means they wanted death penalty to stay in mm. Ghana. Only 9%. Yeah. That's public opinion. And I think that's a true reflection of Ghana. I think a lot of people come out and say, no, it's, it's not good. Mm -hmm. um, but funny enough, you do a survey like this, people are well informed and people know that we need to make progress. Under international law, um, it's, it's not... Um, we d they don't believe in um, you know capital punishment. Mm. So I think Ghana's Ghana has signed onto so many yeah, international so many, yeah, laws. Yeah. So it's like we're abusing the rights of individuals if we don't abolish it. Abolish that. Well, if you just tuned in, uh, you're watching the morning rush. We're having a discussion this morning whether Ghana should abolish the death penalty. And I don't know you could you could send your WhatsApp messages. Um, 0553 Let's hear from you what you think about the 0553 Gene Genevieve Partington is from Amnesty International. So the alternative for you is um, life imprisonment. Life imprisonment without parole mm. and then the classification of murder crimes, which, okay. which they are working on currently, I know, the judicial mm -hmm. system. Have you, have you had a chance to speak to people who are on death um, row? So, mm. for, not for me personally, okay. but yes, um, Amnesty International, yeah, as, as group, we've, yeah. we've, we've um, spoken, we've had the chance to visit Ghana mm. prisons in Sawam. And yes, we've spoken to some uh, uh, prisoners on death row. We even wanted to do uh, research. Okay. And in fact, a lot of them suffer from anxiety, depression, mm. and mental health conditions. Yeah. So, and then some of them were suffering that even before, before. they got there. So you ask yourself, like, are we being human? I understand they committed a crime. crime. Some are not even aware that they committed a crime, which uh, shows the health, the mental health challenges that they are having. And others, through the fact that they don't know when they'll be executed. They'll be executed. Yes, just they, have are, to take, they are on know, edge. Mm. Um, the, the families of those convicted are not um, very comfortable with, mm. you, you know, what's happening. Um, like, they don't know their future. They don't know their fate. At least if, they, if, they are, if, if it's life in prison, they know that, unfortunately, they may pa pass yeah, in, prison. in prison. But if it's also life imprisonment, those who got unfair trials, mm -hmm. those who may perhaps be innocent, yeah can at least seek uh, an appeal in, mm. in court to be, you know, for their cases to be reviewed. Um, although Ghana has taken, um, I think we, we voted for um, a moratorium at the um, UN General Assembly mm -hmm. um, earlier this year, okay. which is great. Um, but, I mean, I think any president can come and change, turn that around. Somebody can decide they are not 
abiding by yeah, abiding by, by the moratorium mm. because this this happens all the time. It's the same way. Um, I think uh, in '93 there was something about okay, those on death pen, death row after ten years, it will be commute, commuted to life imprisonment. Okay. We actually had that had years ago, like that. Mm. but then all of a sudden it's been forgotten. Yeah. You know, it's not being done. So you ask yourself, then it's like people can easily tweak things that mm. are not necess that are not in the law. In the law. Yes. So once we make the amendments to the bill, it is in the law. And, you know, people can, you know, experience life yeah. imprisonment but, but But how soon do you think that that's going to happen? Uh, because you had mentioned the processes that you've, you've been yeah, through so, so far. so, you know, we're a democracy. We, we have to rely on parliament. Mm. As I said, I mean, first of all, it's a shame that governments of Ghana didn't take this up themselves. Mm -hmm. um, so private members' bills, unfortunately are not entirely funded by government or parliament. Okay. So you have to get private funding for it as well. So we're hoping that um, enough money is raised and the, the parliamentarians will be able to sit and relook at the um, Criminal Code and the Armed Forces Act, and then they'll be able to, you know, consider the, the bill. So we're hoping maybe in a month or two months' time they'll be able to do that. Once they sit and do that, review um, what has been proposed, because quite a number of organizations, CSOs, have sent mm -hmm. in memos yes. with yes. propositions on how it should look. Mm. And um, they need, Parliament needs to sit, understand, and then, you know, present a very good document to represent in Parliament so that it can be voted on. So that's the process we, we are in okay. currently. So hopefully, hopefully it, go, it goes through. Hopefully um, it goes through. Mm. Yes, we are praying. So then, now we would have to depend on the votes. The votes in Parliament, and hopefully a lot of MPs are for the abolition. About that. Um, so for, for your, your 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 organization as Amnesty International, as this goes through Parliament, we're waiting on that for yes. the rest of the year. What are some of the things you're you're working on? Well, we we'll continue our advocacy. Yeah. Um, we wanted to do a study as well, mm -hmm. a research study on um, uh, persons on death row. So we want to look into that, see the psychological impact, impact of them being on yeah. death row. I mean, at a certain point, uh, we couldn't even access the condemned cells because there was a breakout of tuberculosis. Yeah. Like, because there's congestion there. Mm. Um, they are so prone to a, a lot of diseases and things, and their conditions are bad. Uh, prison currently uh, feeding uh, pris in prisons is one CD eighty persons. One CD eighty persons. Yes, I, for I, the I, day. Oh. I really know that for story. For the whole day, and I mean even King K, K K that cry right now is five CDs. <laughs> yeah. And the five CDs bowl, True. I don't True. think you can. No, no, you no, can no, eat two. Too old, hey, <laughs> so it's it's mm. it's a very serious situation, and yeah. I think we need to look at these things with compassion. Um, we need to understand that even even the the families of victims, yeah. um, they don't want persons to be on death row. There's actually a study on that, mm. that families of victims are not for death penalty. They actually want to, they see life imprisonment as, you know, a way of maybe suffering, yeah. you know, because you have to live with the memory. Yeah. Um, I always watch the crime channel. Um, there's a documentary on Netflix um, okay. I am a killer. Mm -hmm. And in fact, it, it shows people on death row. Wow. You see how a lot, some of them regret, regret what they yeah. did. And they are living with the, the memories of what they did. Mm -hmm. And they are on life Im imprisonment. And some of them actually want to die so that it can end the mm -hmm. trauma. But they are on life imprisonment. imprisonment so they have to, to endure. That. Yes. So actually, a lot of families of victims... They want them they, they, on. They want that. Oh, yes. I think I've also been reading a lot, um, and as I mentioned, I watch you know, a lot of the stuff, and the unfair trial bit is one that really yes. got me, because you'd have people be sentenced, like they already done like 20 years in prison already. Yes, and, and it happens a lot in the United States. Mm. You know, people have been in prison 20, 30 years, and then all of a sudden they've been exonerated. Yes. The state pays them some lousy amount of mm. money that doesn't equal yeah. the 30 years that yeah. they've been in yeah. prison and then they come out lost 
broken mm. and trying to find their and way, find their way around, and, you know. and, and it's sad and, and a lot of these that's in the states are black black men yeah you see um our, our current prison system i think there are seven women on on death row and the rest are men men yes the rest are men so it asks you what what is the root cause i think that's what um, we as a society rather need to look at, look at why are people committing these crimes mm. um, at least in Ghana we don't have um, well, some of we used to have armed robbery when mm -hmm. you do armed robbery mm -hmm. as well you are sentenced, sentenced to death yeah. um, a lot of uh, countries still do that drug possession mm. you can be sentenced to death for drug possession but luckily I think in Ghana that has been that, uh, that, cancelled off yeah. Yes, who like a lot See, of that's, people. That's, that's going to be crazy, row. though. Yes, that's really um, going to be crazy. For a certain crazy. amount yeah. of, of drug possession, you can be on death row. But luckily, in, in Ghana, that has um, not been the case for some time. Um, yes, yeah, so we are looking for you know solutions, yeah. and I'm happy that the judicial system is really looking I'm to overhaul, okay. considering mm. um, better progressive steps to uh, you know to a better system because it looks like no president and and i'm choosing my words carefully no leader wants to be the one that the fingers will be pointed at that you signed it and like you could kill people you know so yes. I, I guess that's what's that's the reason why since 93 it's been there for a very long time yes. and like you're saying people in there are living with anxiety they don't know when yes. no any president can and, say and, and people some people say we should retain it at least you know mm. But even the International Criminal Court, Rwanda Court, you mm -hmm. know, for Africa trials yeah, and yeah. things, we go to Rwanda Court, they don't have death penalty as a punishment for terrorists and those mm. who commit genocide. Yeah. Um, they actually don't have uh, uh, the death penalty. They look at life imprisonment mm. and, and, you know, other forms of punishment. punishment. So if the whole International Criminal Court doesn't, do that to terrorists, to, mm. to people that have committed genocide, then why we as a country, I mean, history is being made and Ghana is lacking behind, lagging behind. Lagging behind. We need to that. pick up yeah, the pick pace up. And, and be part of history. It will be a shame that, you know, so many countries are abolishing. Last year, um, recently, that was 2021, mm -hmm. Sierra Leone abolished Okay. Uh, and then last year, uh, Central African Republic Public. abolished. Yeah, so what are we doing? Uh, I, Senegal, I, I go, I go Senegal has abolished. Yeah. Ivory Coast has mm. abolished. Eh? South Africa abolished a long time mm. ago. And look at the atrocities that yeah, happened there. Yeah. Rwanda abolished. It was mm. one of the first African countries to abolish. And look at what happened there. Even with the Tutsi Hutu mm. situation, um, you know, there how was genocide. Was. Look at mm. how many people died in Rwanda. But what did they do? They decided to have a reconciliation process, mm, a healing process, process. Because they knew that if they are to sentence people to death, there's going like to be a of lot of country. issues. How about the country yeah. will be dead? Because so yeah. many people committed crimes and there were so many child soldiers there. You know, so, so Ghana, we really have to look at it. Even Burundi. So you can see a lot of conflict-ridden yeah. areas. Have abolished. have abolished that. Yes. And, and then, lastly, Ghana, remember we had a whole National Reconciliation yeah, yeah. Uh, Commission mm. to look at things that were done during, um, you know, the period where there was a coup and mm. things like that. And people felt uh, the government at the time had been cruel and tortured people. Yeah. We went through a reconciliation process. And most of the people that were uh, asked, what do they want out of this process? You could see that they wanted forgiveness. They just wanted people to acknowledge, acknowledge. that I, I've committed this mm. crime. I'm sorry. Let's see what we can do. What's the healing process? Yeah. Um, nobody was looking at death or I want this person to die, die because this person killed this person or did this to me. So I think Ghana, we are a forgiving nation. We are compassionate. We have empathy. I know. I know how it, it may feel to... Have someone kill a kill, family yeah. member. And, and even most of it, when they get into the, the, the courts, the, the families, you know, I, I remember this uh, recently, the lady who was uh, shot in Kumasi. Yes. From like, won't could it be, you know, this Yes, but it's, mm. it's not the answer. For that policeman, you know, 
yes, automatically he's going to be sentenced to death by the current yeah. law. There's no two ways about mm. that. There were witnesses. He's going to jail and he'll be sentenced to death. Um, my issue is, is, is that really the solution? Sometimes I feel life imprisonment gives that person uh, the chance. We're all human. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can commit a crime. Sure. You just don't know what state of mind you are in at that moment. He was acting out of emotions. Uh, was it a, a preconceived crime? Mm. Premeditated? Was he, was he, did he plan it? You know, these are the questions that come in uh, when you are sentencing someone to death, right? So, yes, I think the way forward would be to, to push for life imprisonment. Okay. I, I can imagine how their family yeah, feel because feel she was shot it. several yeah. times. And I feel like life imprisonment is even worse than sentencing someone to death, honestly. Because the person has to live with knowing that I killed someone. Mm. And, you know, prison system is a way of rehabilitation and reform. Let's not forget. Yeah, yeah, true. It is not a form of, okay, you did this crime, so you, you need to die, die for doing this crime. Um, that, that, mm. And mind you, it's a British colonial yeah, thing. thing. Yeah. They brought it here, you mm. know, chopping people. They used to do it in England, chopping people's heads off, you know, off with his head. Mm. <laughs> the kings, then, where, you, where you have treason, but they, you're, you're gone. You're gone. You're gone. Um, mm. So I think we really need to we look need into to that it, and, yeah. and see our prison system as a form of rehabilitation and reform. I think once we do that yeah. social behavioral change, People will understand that, yes, this, this doesn't work. Okay. For the prison reform one, I have my own thoughts about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's not working, but uh, Genevieve, thank you so much for coming. Thank you, too. And um, uh, yeah, we'll see how this all goes. Yes. Any, and, and anything you want to add? Yeah. So last thing, the death, our death penalty report is available online. Okay. I didn't bring a copy. I'm okay. really trying to be paper conscious, <laughs> environmentally yeah, conscious. Yeah, yeah, sure. So it's completely free. Mm. You can download it from the Amnesty website. Yeah, I would go through it, it has yeah. so many, uh, so much info about countries that have abolished mm. and how you yourself, an individual, can play a role in abolishing the death penalty all over the world. Okay. So please feel free to go there and download it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Genevieve Partington, for joining us. I know the morning is somewhere. You, know. you. <laughs> you owe me a coffee. <laughs> Thank you, Genevieve, for coming through. So uh, that was a conversation about the death penalty. As you mentioned, the process is already in place. And hopefully, um, in Parliament, things will be sped up so that the death penalty would be abolished. She's talked about you know, the, the, the psychological effect on, on persons like that, and their families. It's a very critical one, but we'll see how it goes.